Yeah! 150 fish inside the bag! Yes, this is a blessing and I'm so happy with this to have this assorted fish and this is the product of our hard work. Hi guys, it's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. I'm so much excited today. Why? Because as I look back, we were able to realize our dreams for this year 2022. And I have a clear vision about 2023. We're going to be able to do a massive farm activities with the new farm that we have just right here near the house and what makes me more inspired today is that we are going to harvest our fish and i was told that we can harvest more than 200 for just this morning in a very small concrete tank the system of our filtration is really working good but before the harvest allow me to say something about the badges or the parakeets as we know we are now running short of these nest boxes. Well, in the past, I told you that the nest boxes for these badges should be something like hard, something like uh, sturdy, so that it can withstand with the beaks of these uh, small birds. Because these birds have a powerful beaks that they can munch everything they wanted to eat. And today, I'm going to reveal to you the most practical, the most convenient, and the most less expensive nest box that we can provide for our badges and these are the bamboo you know these bamboos are just readily available in the lumber yards, in the native products, you can find anywhere here in the Philippines this bamboo. One thing more that I can tell you about the bamboo is that they have a big space for our birds and it is also very important for these birds to have a room for the chicks because these birds can hatch more than five there are even six or seven birds that can be hatched in one single nest box This is the bamboo that we're going to utilize for our birds. And you will see here that we already made the holes. And I'm so happy because aside from we're running short of this nest boxes, that, well, that's an indication that you are doing good with your breeding because the young ones uh, was able now to find their partners and they are now also due to breed. So I'm anticipating of 
more breeding for this year 2023 because we already have studied this one if you will just feed your birds with their favorite seeds and we will provide the greens this uh, moringa this uh, water spinach or otherwise known as kangkong in our dialect here and even this olasiman this tree are very effective in producing our birds and another thing that i can reveal to you these are secrets well open secret for that matter but oftentimes we neglected or give little emphasis about this the cattle bone really very important the cattle bone because it can provide good calcium to our birds and in my observation if you're gonna feed them with the tree leaves or greens this olasiman during breeding season moringa and this water spinach plus the cattle bone you will have a perfect breeding in whatever bird that you may farm like this cockatiel this african lovebirds so now we will divide this bamboo because this is too long to fit inside the cage so i decided to just cut this into half so that it will fit the cage we have a small cage and the length of this is actually more than six feet so we have to cut this one and then we will cover both ends and we are set to place this inside the breeding cages of our badges Ta-da! <laughs> But my problem is the end of this one. Of course, you had to cover because the bird will not like this opening here. So we will put some covering here. And then I'm sure that this will now fit inside in this cage. Maybe you're interested why we are putting this one. This is to ensure that we can check the activity of the birds inside. But it will just be, you know, close like that and we have here the lock so that the birds could not open this one every time that we need to check what is the activity inside or if there is a need for us to clean the nest box inside or there is a dead chick that we have to get to avert the presence of the ants then we will open this one so this is also very important so that we will have the control of the activity of the birds inside in the nest box. All has been set. We already have placed this bamboos. And now the next activity would be one of the most exciting because this is harvest. And during the harvest, I always thank God for allowing us to have this wisdom, to have this knowledge on how to go about breeding and rearing this fish in order to become big. And then we will harvest and sell them to the market. And this is one of the most important part in fish farming, the harvest. And you will see here that we have a good number of fish. And they are mixed. There are carps or Japanese koi. Have here this platinum koi. And then we also have so many of this calico. And even this single tail goldfish. These are comets. 
that we have crossed to the Shubunkin. And these are good quality now. And I'm so happy because this is the cycle of our business. You know, we have this aquatic shop and we're selling our fish. And we got our stocks from our own breed. And majority of our products sold in our pet store are the product of our own effort. The product of our own breeding. And this is one of the most exciting parts, the harvest. We expect to harvest more than 200 for this morning. Yeah! 150 fish inside the bag! Yes, this is a blessing. And I'm so happy with this to have this assorted fish. And this is the product of our hard work. And we expect to harvest more than 200 for this morning in just in a very small tank. And these are actually the remnants of what we have uh, harvested last week. And they're already big. Our procedure here is to harvest the bigger ones and then the smaller ones will be thrown back for regrowth. So now we will put some oxygen here because they will not survive without this chemical oxygen. Oh, okay. Ouch. Yes. It's your turn. It's quite tiresome, but it's rewarding. You know, in life there is no shortcut. We have to toil, we have to labor so that we will earn an income, we will earn money. And some of you ask, Dexter, what's the secret? How did you grow your fish that massively and so quickly and effectively? Well, I have to tell you that we will just maintain a balanced ecosystem in our tank. And to maintain the balanced ecosystem is to ensure that we can establish a good cycle of the water. The water will have to pass through the filtration system. And we have this natural filter media here that uh, we are always mentioning. These are the plants. These are the potus plants and even this hydrilia that are there and aside from these plants that we utilize as our filter media we are helped by this this snails Aray. whoa Wah. well we have to be careful about handling this because this is so sharp i had a cut here and uh, one thing that we can talk about the snails is we can crush them like that we can crush them like that and we can feed them to our chickens we can feed them to our catfish you'll see of course we have to make sure that the shells are taken out because the catfish might be choked with this hard shell of this uh, uh, the snails, the Nerai snails. See, they're eating it. And these are actually the cycle. You can just grow this very easily. They are really also very invasive. If they will multiply a lot, then th that would also become detrimental to the plants because they're eating the plants. And uh, so far, so good. Our system here is doing well for us. And the presence of these snails will help us to produce a balanced ecosystem. You will feed the catfish. Come on, catfish, you eat the snail. <laughs> See that? And they already have the idea about this because they are able to, you know, smell the food. Ah. You can imagine if you can cross hundreds of kilos of these uh, snails, then that would be a great uh, help already to minimize the expenses of the food. See that? Wow. But as what I've told you, you have to be careful. I had a cut here, but it's a small cut. 
because the sh the shells are really very very sharp. See this one? I'm tempted to eat this one, but we don't have vinegar. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I already have tried eating this one, and it's delicious. If you have vinegar and seasoning, it's delicious. But I'm not in the mood of eating with snails today because uh, I already have eaten my breakfast. So if I was hungry, then I might be tempted to eat in front of this camera. But I'm not hungry, I'm full. So we will just feed this to the catfish. To have a balanced ecosystem, we also need the presence of these plants in our tank. And I already have made a blog on this that the use of these potos plants are really very beneficial to our, our tank. And you will see that the root system under is actually very good and this helps us uh, filtering the water. And uh, you know the potos plants will eat all the bacteria and will eat all the, the dirt that may thrive in our tank. What's good also about the spodus plants is that they're not the food for the snails. The snails would not really eat the photos plants. That's why they're thriving. And you will be amazed why they are still very blooming despite of the presence of the snails. Well, you know that these snails are really plant eaters, but they don't eat the photos plants because these photos plants doesn't taste good for them. Well, I'm not a snail, but I can sense that the snail really will shy away the, the taste of this because it's quite bitter. And that's the reason why the sporus plants can really thrive even in the pond that are filled with snails. I had a big cat right here. It's really very painful and uh, well sometimes things are like that but uh, what i am so thankful about is this uh, big harvest this is a big harvest in so far as i am concerned because we are only raising them in a very small concrete tank and as what i have told you you only need to understand the quality of the water the conditions of the fish and even the filtration system these are very important that we have to you know, not neglect. Because if we will ne neglect this one, you, your fish will not grow, they will die. And well, they look not clean, they look dirty, but I am pretty sure that they are under A1 condition, perfect condition. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm just overwhelmed with what I have think about today because the year 2022 is full of blessings. This is also the year that we were able to acquire another new big farm that we are trying now to develop. And we hope to dream more for 2023. And please be with me guys. I know that some of you are always watching the development and interested to know about the progress of our, of our farm, what we're doing here. Well, thank you. Thanks a lot. And I would like to see you in my next video, only here at Dexter's World!